day, another set of patch notes, guys. Hi, my name is CD Mangaka, and today we're going to be looking over the patch 5.8 notes to understand how this is going to affect competitive play as well as our own solo queue experience. We'll be going over pretty much every note, and depending on how big or impactful the changes are, is how we'll determine how much time we spend on each single one of those. If you guys want to get a little more in depth analysis onto the my thoughts on the posts, Go over to gopretend.com. The link will be in the description to the video if you're watching this through YouTube. To read through my, my thoughts on like the uh, whole implications of the overarching thing in a written form. For those of you watching this on the Go Pretend page, thanks for clicking on the video, guys. Come over to my YouTube channel. I produce a lot of content over here when I get really active with it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at patch 5.8. So immediately we're going to go over here. I'm going to move myself right here. That way we can just see everything there. Okay. So, not a lot happens within these patch notes as far as a uh, number of champion changes goes. A couple of key things do get applied, and there are some stark item changes, but the thing that we should note here within this patch is that Cinder Hulk is not touched at all, nor is Skirmisher Saber. Now, Riot has said that they would be looking at Skirmisher Saber to looking to take power away from that just because it is uh, incredibly strong on the top laners who can use it effectively in competitive play. And perhaps we'll see some Cinder Hulk nerfs come in as well just to keep it out of the top lane. I know Riot says, hey, we kind of think it's cool that people are taking a uh, smite into the top lane, a little more diversity in the summoner spells. But that also brings in, that clashes with their ideology of why they introduced Cinder Hulk to begin with. And I might write uh, more on that later. But for now, let's go ahead and just look at the patch notes. So the first thing they open up with is uh, changes to the range indicators with uh, quick casting. So Riot changed how quick casts work, and they kind of did it without even announcing it. Like, people, like, discovered them and said, hey, what the heck is this? So after that, they've kind of reverted things back, but they've also introduced more customizable features into it. Uh, for example, you can now... Now you can do this thing where uh, if you click one key to bring up the range indicator and then you immediately press another key or yeah you're holding down that one quick cast key and then you press the second key it will immediately fire the first ability so that's just like a usability change that you can bring on in uh, you can individually bind a quick cast with a range indicator to the keys that you want so then if there's one ability that you just you don't need a range indicator you just want to quick cast it without even see it bam it's there but if you want one then you can also have that as well just to hold it and get it there so it's a nice little change I think it's a uh, helping the usability of range feature indicators so if you're a player who uses this this is something to really pay attention to I personally don't so my inherent bias is that I pretty much don't care. I just use smart cast and I get the feel for ranges and stuff like that. But this is ultimately a very good change in the sense that it's uh, giving more options for how players are, can customize the way they play the game and just making it, you know, a little more uh, inclusive to everybody. So the first and the biggest, honestly, one of the biggest changes in this 5.8 patch is the Rise WeWorks. This has been coming for a while, so he's gotten a little bit of an ability audio and icon update. Uh, he's lost some base mana regen, but he's gained an additional mat. Well, okay, he's lost base mana regen. I'm reading it right, but he gains more mana regen per level, and he's lost a lot of armor. Actually, that's like almost a whole one point of armor every level. So that's a pretty big nerf. So he has a new passive, and I think to really get an understanding of this, we should pull up what his uh, current spell uses are. So we're gonna go to the league wiki. Go down. This is a really good website to use to refer to stuff. So, this is what his passive is before, or as it is now on live. Whenever you use ability, all of his other abilities have their cooldown reduced by one second. Okay, so this is like the typical rise pattern. Now it's a lot more complex. So now he goes off by building up stacks. So there's this time where he doesn't really have anything going on to him. So, in, within these 12 seconds, because each deck holds off for 12 seconds, after you cast 5 spells within 12 seconds, you will become supercharged for 3 seconds before you get your ultimate rank. Four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, okay? So, this will give you a shield that actually blocks 20 damage plus per five year level and max mana. So, Rise is getting uh, tankier by building mana items. So, this is going to kind of come back in to uh, helping make up for the loss of his armor growth stat, actually. So, this is actually a cool little feature. I like the concept of it. It's like, oh, hey, let's get a shield that can block some damage just to give him, like, some a cooldown rotation-based tankiness. I think it's kind of cool. And then uh, casting his spell cast, 
to reduce the cooldown of his other spells by Overload's cooldown to a minimum of 0 0.25 seconds. Now, whether or not this uh, particular cooldown scales uh, is affected by the cooldown which is applied to his Q, because if you look here um, at his Q, let's talk about his Q, because this is a really big point of the kit change. So, it no longer passively grants cooldown reduction. So, as you max out your Q, you're not getting like this free CDR in the early game. So, that's a pretty substantial nerf to the early game, which in a way makes sense thematically for what Rise or what Riot wants of Rise as a late game hyperscaling mage. Taking out some of his early game ability, but making up by giving him more late game options. It's now a skill shot. So while the range of it has gone up drastically, you can now miss this on champions. It's no longer this free harassing spell. You can miss it. Now they did give some substantial buffs to it in the sense that, hey, it costs like half the mana at rank 1, and it does scale up, but it still costs less mana overall to use, so that's a nice uh, compensation buff. But this is actually particularly weird here that they've reduced the mana ratio on it while increasing the ability power ratio on it. And they increased the cooldown. Now, this at first might seem like also a nerf, but you have to keep in mind that this cooldown is playing a factor into his passive up here. So, by giving him more cooldown here, once he gets his Overlord charges going on, he's actually reducing the cooldown of his other spells by m more. He's getting more CDR with the increase in this one spell's cooldown. So, that is one thing that we have to consider. While this is a single Q nerf, in the context of his whole Kif, this actually buffs him by working with his new passive. So we have to kind of keep that complex idea in mind. Now this is particularly weird while they're taking so much damage out of it. It's like, now the Q kind of is just like, uh, You know, in comparison to what it was before, yeah, it's very, uh, look at this, like, it, it's just a, he gains passive cooldown reduction, 10%, no one cares about the ad. He, you know, he used to gain 10% out of ranking this up, now he doesn't have that 10%. And then this scales with 40% of his AP and 6.5% of his mana at all ranks. Now you're making a skill shot, so now it can miss, and you're giving it more ability power. Okay, that's pretty cool. So that's going to scale with like the Seraph's Embrace and the Rod of Ages that you're going to build a little better. But you're also taking out the mana reduction out of the, uh, not the mana reduction, the ma the some of the mana scaling out of it, so it's losing some damage still. Ultimately, without crunching, sitting down and crunching the numbers, I don't know how much this affects uh, the damage output on him. How much damage he's actually losing. However, the fact that you can miss Q now is already a big enough nerf in itself. So, I don't know how much of this is actually, uh, qua uh, not quantified, qualified to occur to him. Uh, his W is going through basically just flat out uh, nerfs in the late game, but a bit of a buff in the early game. At rank 1, it actually does a little more damage. But, once again, we're seeing that he's losing damage with his uh, mana, with his mana scaling, and with his ability power in this one. So, ultimately, it's a pretty substantial nerf all around on the Rune Prison. Although, this one, I'm thinking that they're keeping this as a one-point wonder. So, like, this won't really, this really won't play effect. Like, for most of the game, if you're maxing this third, which you probably will, given how his Q and his E uh, now work... Yeah, I would definitely think so. I think he would be maxing this one last. I could be wrong, though. You have to keep in mind, I don't play Rise a lot. And one factor which comes into analyzing champion changes is that if you don't play a champion or you don't understand the matchups that they have, things like that, it's a little more difficult to understand how this is going to affect them. So, Rise mains speak up. Uh, bu 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 bu. His E now works a little differently. I actually like how the E works. It's a lot more consistent with how it works. So that is one thing we also have to consider within the kit. So now it uh, reduces the magic resist of targets hit by a percentage second to three times. So this is, with the reduction in magic resist, this is uh, giving. Whereas before, if you look, uh, each bounce hits magic damage. Okay, so there is a, there's always been a magic reduction. There's a shred or reduction, like right here. There you go. But now it uh, stacks up to three times, whereas before it didn't. And right now, this is the return damage. It actually is not giving me how much it stacks up to. I'm assuming it just stacks up to the old amount. So it hits a target, then it bounces nearby enemies, ends the rise, and then it returns to the original target. So, whereas before you had like the Scatterbrain E spell, it will always come back to hit the original target. So the usability of this particular spell in terms of single target damage is greatly improved. Because instead of throwing one spell and hoping it goes back to them, at least I think it didn't go back to them. Let's see.
Yeah, before it wouldn't like it doesn't bounce back to the uh, original target. So, and so enemy arms within two hundred range or up to five time five times total six hits. So now like this is single target is greater. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the damage on it looks fairly new as well, and then return damage. Yeah, so they reintroduced this, but once again, it looks like his uh, maximum mana rates are actually fairly low. So. I mean, this is all really concerning, but again, one thing I have to consider is that every one of these spells, I wish I could see the cooldown reduction on those, is going to be shaved off by like 4 seconds. If you get up to like 40% CDR, which you can still do with Rise in this kit uh, pretty easily, is going to be like another 2.5 seconds off of each spell cast that you hit. Now, not spell hit, but spell cast, if I recall correctly. Yep, cause, cast causing a spell, so we'll have to see how ultimately how this all uh, plays out. And then Desperate Power is ultimate. It gets a uh, longer cooldown in the early game, but a little shorter cooldown in the late game. Uh, the duration of it, nerfed across the board. That kind of sucks. Um, this one level up is passive, and now it also gives him a cooldown reduction, and a great amount of cooldown reduction, actually. If you look at his old ultimate. So you have this, and before, it just didn't give cooldown reduction. It looks like it's still going to have the spell vamp on it as well. But now the damage out of his Q is, or the cooldown reduction from his Q is taken out, and it's been buffed considerably into his ultimate. How? So once you kind of get around to level uh, six, whereas you're nearing closer to the old 10% that Max and Q would give you, you now have a buff right there, and then you have 20% at a 11 minutes, so you can hit the 40% CDR mark uh, around at level 11 if you have a frozen heart at that point. But that's a pretty hard mark to hit, given the fact that. That's you're trying to build a Seraph's Embrace and a Rod of Ages and then a Frozen Heart. That's just a pretty hard marker to hit. To hit. However, if you build something like a Spirit Visage instead, then you will hit that mark uh, at level 16, which is something I think is very doable. So while this 30% of the late game is really nice, uh, it can basically hinder you in terms of building cooldown reduction simply because if you build 20% CDR, you're going to be wasting 30 or 10% of it by getting this free 30%. So uh, we'll have to see how this ultimately affects him. It's a, I think ultimately there's some really cool stuff going on, like um how his new passive is going to work. It's a little more interesting. The shield on it will be really cool to see. But overall, I think that Ryze will be losing some of his power, but perhaps in this state... He's going to be in a much more balanceable point in time. Now that his Q's a skill shot, you know, if he's not doing so well, hey, then they can buff the damage on it to reward you for hitting it more. Maybe they can adjust the whole bunch of different stuff. I, I ultimately, I'm going to like this, but I think right now it, we're going to probably see Rise suffer in win rates in terms of just how the balancing is on his kit, as well as players learning it. So this will be interesting to see. Um, uh, I'm expecting buffs in the future just until people either learn him or until Riot hits a sweet spot for him. So either way, fun stuff. RE charm and no longer stops uh, interrupts unstoppable effects. So Malphite, Hecarim, Vi, they're not gonna have such like a get, get denied so hard. Bard, uh, he's getting a bit of a buff on his chimes. They're no longer spawning in the enemy jungle, so that means his chimes will be on his side of the map. So that's quite a bit of a buff to him if he can actually go frickin' roam. I think Bard is still kind of be eh, but I think people, I think his win rate's climbing, probably because in part of some of the buffs he's been getting, as well as probably fewer people playing him, and so like the sample size is smaller. And then uh, experience per chime actually uh, starts to scale fairly well. Let's see, plus one XP per minute after five minutes. Okay, so the chime experience starts to scale so that he's getting more XP over the game time. That's pretty nice. So Blitzcrank, if we recall in our 5.7 notes, he got nerfed pretty hard. Uh... In laning phase, actually, it's a bit of a buff if you just go all in for it, because now his W is no longer this constant movement speed buff, but this huge movement speed buff, which then decays, and then you're slow, opening up a huge counterplay opportunity for your enemies to really work on, aside from the ability's cooldown. Now, uh, apparently Riot has gone a little overboard with the change, which I think they did, and now the movement speed bonus decays sl uh, more slowly, meaning that you're going to have more movement speed uh throughout the duration of the spell, which is nice. And then the movement speed bonus does not decay below 10%. So now there's like a base floor to it. So it's ultimately giving Blitzcrank a little love back and probably will help him out. Well, no, it's definitely going to help him out a bit, but it's still giving him that open opportunity for counterplay, which Riot wanted to introduce with the W changes to begin with. Ultimately, I think this is a nice change. This one's a little hard to understand for me, just because of wording, but I basically think that it means um, that when you walk into a brush it's easier to see Caitlyn's trap. That way, you can avoid it. And so, 
it's kind of Caitlyn just gets uh, less reward for just, oh, I didn't see her trap in there. And, yeah, so it was a little easier to avoid traps is what I'm reading this as. Mundil. This is actually a fairly big change. So, uh, this is showing you how much he recovers, actually. His Q now refunds on kill. It refunds 100% of the cost on killing blows. So, this applies to pretty much everything. So, what does this do for Mundo? Well, if you can last hit with it, you can basically farm with Q forever. So, that's a pretty substantial nu uh, buff to Mundo's lane sustain in terms of being forced into a lane stop or landing against a difficult matchup, which I don't know how many of those actually exist for Mundo or which champions are that. I think ranged mages give him a hard time, but don't quote me on that. Uh, and then... Uh, his sadism also tells you how much he's actually going to recover. So now players have a little more knowledge to work with when it comes to playing Munda, which is cool. And then this is going to help him farm. As well as if you clear the jungle with it, uh, you can improve your clear speed. Now, this is only when you kill a unit, though. So I basically think this is going to be a huge buff to top lane Mundo in terms of being able to sustain in lane at a distance and uh, being in bad matchups. So this is going to help him out quite a bit there. Graves are receiving a bit of a tweak. They're taking away some of his free damage on his Q. So he's losing some base damage. Uh, once he gets his max out, he loses 20 damage overall. The AD ratio on it goes down by 0 0.05, which isn't a whole lot. But the bonus damage per bullet goes, uh, gets increased by 10% to compensate for that. So this is rewarding Graves for getting as close as Riot wants him to and landing on multiple buckshots, shots, like a point-blank buck shot. So this should balance itself out. And then the maximum damage, if you look here before, there's actually about the same base damage, but the bonus damage is up by almost, uh, by actually more than 10%. It's up by 11% on the AB ratio. So this is ultimately gonna this is gonna kinda help Graves out if he can land all three of the buckshots in the uh, mid and late game skirmishes. It's gonna help him out quite a bit, but Graves is still gonna suffer from the same problems in the mid and late game, which is his scaling, going down the fact that he has to get really close to get the spell damage off and to reap the benefit of like this change here puts him in a fairly bad spot. So his snowball will be stronger with these changes, but like his play from behind is going to become a little weaker because if you're behind, it's more risky to go face to face with an enemy, like just go right into them because they could, hey, they could kill you if you're behind. So ultimately, it's pretty much an all around Graves nerf with trying to give him a compensationary buff, which in practicality, I don't think is going to be too useful, but hey, it's there. So this is a huge nerf uh, to Jinx. Now keep in mind, guys, that this, how this change works is that the minimum damage, so this is what it looks like when you first fire it. If you fire it and the enemy's right on top of you, you're only going to get the 25, 35, 45, and 0.1 bonus attack damage out of it, but you still get the missing health damage on it. So you still have the execute damage to work with. The base damage, though, has just been gutted. And again, this is point blank. The max range damage, the max damage on this spell, isn't changed at all. And so how this spell works is that, uh, right, actually, like, uh, there's a really good post by one of the Riot guys about the context of the change, and he outlines the damage values at each point. And they measure it by, okay, so here's point blank, is if they, it, you fire it and hit someone immediately. Then there's the damage at the Gatling gun, there's a the damage at your max range, at Jinx rocket range, and then there's the maximum damage which kicks in at the max range of zap. So if you hit a max range zap, that's where um, your ultimate hits its maximum damage, is at the maximum range of zap. So... At every single point up to the max range of zap, the damage on this spell is nerfed. So, if you pop this spell at a very close quarters, it's less rewarding, right? It's trying to reinforce the identity of this spell as like a sniping tool, or as like a finishing off kill. So if you're used to all ending with Jinx and you just pop this ultimate for the extra damage, you're going to lose quite a bit of damage. Like, you've lost 100 extra damage on this spell. Again, keep in mind, you still have the missing percent health damage, so it's not like the spell is completely shit. It's just... It's just shit to use at a, at a really close range. Whereas, bef if you use it how Riot, quote-unquote, wants you to use it at the maximum range, you're going to get the same benefit out of it. So, this just basically makes Jinx a little less uh, snowball-y, and it kind of rewards people for getting right on top of her. So now, if you're Jinx, you have to kite away and be able to get set up for your... to get a really good death rocket off, rather than just... You know, even... Even though, like, in the same case, uh, you want to do that before, now there's just less incentive to pop at close range. So, either way, we might see a dip in our uh, win rate from this as players just get used to how this new uh, R damage works. Ultimately, I'm not too concerned with it. Kha'Zix gets a heal buff in the early game, 20 uh, with rank 1, so this helps out his sustain a little bit. This doesn't fix all of Kha'Zix's issues. The current tank meta is just really strong right now, and so he's not going to have a lot of targets to assassinate. Um... Now, here's a little bit of buff to Mordkaiser, which 
nobody plays him really, but now he can move while casting his Creeping Death. So this is pretty nice, it's just a little usability thing, and now uh, this and Nunu have the same little feature to it, where if you cast it on yourself, it automatically targets the nearest champion next to you as well. So this helps uh, for both of them, and I think it applies to both of them. So this just kind of makes it a little easier, instead of like, uh, if you target yourself, you don't just like lose the benefit of trying to cast it on somebody else. So that's pretty nice. Uh, Nunu loses some health per level just because he has Consume and Cinder Hulk to give him health already. So he's just losing a bit of that. Same buff as Mordkaiser. Pantheon now has a ping when he Sky Falls in. So that's just like a little more help for your team to realize, oh, my Pantheon's coming in. Okay, I need to get there. Shen. This is a fairly cool utility buff. So whenever Shelt Shen ults into a target, it places him between his target and the closest visible enemy champion. So now Shen is a better bodyguard. Uh, for this one, rather than appearing wherever the hell he did before. So now this is going to be like a dynamic uh, use of his ultimate, and it's always going to put him at a point where he can shadow uh, dash taunt to somebody, or or at least begin to make the move to go there. So it's a fairly nice change. I don't think this this isn't going to make Shen instantly viable. I've talked about this before in an article, actually, whereas I think that uh, Shen just doesn't have enough wave clear, and he doesn't scale with health as hard as other champions do to really benefit from the uh, top Cinder Hulk meta. But this is a nice change regardless. Definitely a buff that's worth noticing. Sion gets a nerf here. Uh, you have to wait an additional second for in order to detonate your shield, meaning that the enemy has an extra second to get damage off to stop you from detonating it. And the maximum health ratio is severely nerfed in the early ranks. So we might see uh, Scions get punished for maxing his E first. Kind of like, he's losing some free damage here, so he's losing a lot of this lame bully status uh, that Riot's given to him. And now I think that we're going to probably start seeing if people are still maxing his E, which I think they should just because it gives you a lot of... it. It's good poke, uh, even though the mana cost does go up. The armor shred's nice on it. But now we're probably going to definitely see E, W, Q uh, maxes, just because you need to get this maxed up for team fights in order to really benefit from the maximum health damage that you have on it. But again, this should be uh, a fairly substantial nerf. It took you long enough, Riot. Shouts to the community for helping sniff this out. Dude, everybody knew about this for, like, years. What the shit do you mean? Thanks for sniffing it out. This is fucking notorious. You call it notorious, and then you just say, Hey, thanks, guys, for letting us know about it. Oh, my God. The PR on this is so bad. But thank you. Thank you, Riot, for implementing that. So, all right. Comical reaction done. Warwick, bit of a bug fix. That's nice. Uh, bug fix for Zareth, that's nice. Yasuo, fun change here. He basically has blocks an extra 40 damage with his early game shield, and ah, uh, 40 damage. So his shield's basically buffed by 40, which is pretty nice. So he's a little safer to play, but his uh flow charge rate is uh nerfed in the early game. So he's not gonna. While his shield is stronger, he doesn't build it up as fast. So it kind of bounces itself out. Ultimately, I think it's a bit of a buff. Just because if you play around this window correctly, you're going to block more damage than you would have before. And you just have to build up your flow before going all in uh, more often. So, Anyways, and here's all the texture reworks coming in. Pretty cool stuff. The new Black Cleaver is something that uh, definitely warrants a discussion. I've been at this for 23 minutes. Okay. Uh, so, this is going to be a really good item. I don't think it's going to be like uh, the like when Black Cleaver was first introduced and everybody should build it, but let me just give you the context on this one, okay? For the first time in recent League of Legends history, probably since like Season 3, I want to say. I could be wrong. Correct me on this one. But now an AD tank. And what I mean by that is that a champion who wants to build some attack damage and then go straight tank now has a hybrid item that gives 20% CDR. The only tank item which has given CDR in the past, there's been two of them. Okay, Frozen Heart and Spirit Visage. Spirit Visage has been nerfed uh, to only give 10%. So Frozen Heart's the only cooldown item for a tank that, you know, you can be an AP tank or an AD tank, which they can build to get that uh, damage reduction on it. Now there's Black Cleaver. So if you're in a position to build this, holy shit. 20% CDR is really strong, guys. It, it really is. Now Phage now builds out of something else. It gives more health, it loses the flat armor penetration, it loses some AD, but again, it gains this. The armor shed duration lasts two seconds longer, although you have an extra stack on it. And then there's this new unique passive, so Rage Physical Damage grants 20 movement speed for two seconds. Now, careful on the wording on this one, guys. To my understanding, if I'm correct on this, it says dealing physical damage. 
So if you have an AoE spell that does physical damage, you get the movement speed bonus out of this. Picture this item on Hecarim. You get your Q, all right, and what, what how Triforce works with Hecarim is that you get the auto attack, you get the movement speed, you run around, and then you get a free Q off, okay? But you have to get the auto attack first to get the movement speed. Now, you can just Q. You just deal physical damage. So now Hecarim is getting extra movement speed in the laning phase while he's shredding your armor with 20% CDR on it. And with him getting the movement speed, he's getting a little extra AD with it. And if he kills a unit, you know, kills any unit or receives his own champion, he gains 60 movement speed for 2 seconds instead. Ultimately, I think this item is going to be pretty good on Hecarim. Only problem with it, though, is that you basically have to choose between this item and the, um, and Trinity Force. Now, I think that Trinity Force is still a better buy on Hecarim, just because, um... You know, you get mana out of it, you get some movement speed out of it, you still get like a very, you still get this similar rage passive, even though it only applies uh, to auto attacks. But, you, this this could be a, a viable option. If someone immediately just goes in and they start stacking armor like against you right out of the gate, you could pick this up instead and just shred through that armor. So, I'll be interested to see how this goes up. Uh, to speak of other champions besides Hecarim, I think that champions like uh, Garen, Darius... Uh, these immobile uh, bruisers who suffer from getting like uh, mobility creeped up on could have another like have a nice option for them to actually go still get tanky, get a lot of cooldown reduction, and get some movement speed. So ultimately, this could improve some off meta picks in solo queue. Whether or not this makes an impact in competitive play, we'll have to see. But it's a fairly strong item. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some nerfs to it. I just don't know which abuse cases will pop up and be prevalent because there is the opportunity cost which comes with the item. Reef Curve bow, bow is getting worked. Now you can uh, build up to it out of Dagger, so that's cool. Although the total cost goes up by 200, and it deals an extra 10 physical damage on hit. So, bit of a flat trade. This is huge! Holy shit! I read this and my jaw dropped, guys. Let's play the Rune King. So, now, on hit passive now benefits from lifesteal. What does that mean? Well, before... Bloodthirster, okay, would be like the item to define sustaining at all because you had 20% lifesteal on it, okay? And Blade of the Rune King, you would get lifesteal from it, but you would only get it from the physical damage with you do. How Blade of the Rune King works is that you, your auto attack deals physical damage, and then your Blade of the Rune King would apply its uh, current health damage on the side of it, and those two would come together to... Do to form what your auto attack damage is, okay? However, your lifesteal would only work with the physical damage built into it. So while you do get 10% lifesteal out of it, and you're opt itemizing for this uh, percent health damage, okay, you're not getting as much lifesteal out of it while you're getting more damage, so there's a trade-off there. Now, how Blade of the Room King is going is that you're getting this half of the damage of Blade of the Room King, the current health damage, which you didn't lifesteal off before, is now being implemented into it. So now, holy shit, the sustain of people who against tanks who build this item is, like, immensely... It's so good now. This is just... This is great. This is the buff that ADCs needed, in my opinion, to really sustain in these tank fights. Now, if you're in a, in a tanky fighting scenario, there's almost no reason to build Bloodthirster over Blade of the Rune King. Because now, Blade of the Rune King's sustain, at the start of fights when tanks are most healthy... Is probably you could potentially outshine Bloodthirsters for a time until until you get the target lower and then the the sustain will fall off on the item because your current health damage is going to go down. But that's still that's still a really good thing to have. And the recipes also change and now builds out of Bilgewater Cutlass and the Reeve Curve Bow plus 700 gold. So you know you get to hit these item specs a bit more and it also gets the extra 10 passive minimum damage on it. So overall, this is some really nice buffs to Blade of the Room King. I'm really excited to see that. Renan's Hurricane gets a bit of a buff. Uh, total cost goes up, deals like that tempo is physical damage on hit, so there's like a little flat damage coming in. Wits end changes, devour changes, righteous glory gets nerfed by 50. Right says we went a little overboard, it's only taking four patches. Dragons might, uh, they're tweaking it a little bit, apparently it wasn't applying all that well, so now auto attack damage, uh, with for champions who have this in the aid with AD items will now be higher while their spells will be. Well, spells will do less damage, so ultimately a buff to, like, a marksman, but a bit of a nerf to, like, AD casters, who are relying on spell damage. So there's that. So visual updates coming in to Howling Abyss. This is all Howling Abyss stuff, so that's cool, that's cool. Some skin boost coming in, a Howling Abyss, Crystal Tree Line, Crystal Scar. 
more of these uh, math specific changes which I don't really care about because I don't play those game modes if you guys care that's cool friends list uh, they're adjusting that a bit some bug fixes coming in and some new skins so ultimately a fairly light patch but the big takeaways from this patch I'm gonna do this the biggest takeaway from this patch is Rise Reaver coming on in and uh, the new Black Cleaver item and seeing how that affects uh, AD tanks in the current meta. And then the Blade of the Rune King change. Holy shit, that's a really good change. I'm quite excited about that. Just to, because it's going to enable Marksman to sustain through these huge uh, tank scaling fights. So that's a fairly cool change. Also helps out Assassins to build the item. So, uh... There you go. And any tanks who can get away with building the item also get a benefit from it as well. So, play the Rune King buffs. That's uh, some pretty cool stuff, guys. So, anyways, thank you guys for uh, watching this whole patch thing. I know it's quite a long video, but hey, if you stuck through it just to understand the patch and kind of get my thoughts on it, thank you so much. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter where you can keep up with uh, little announcements that I make, some plans that I have coming up. Uh, be sure, and you'll see any works I do with uh, Gold Pretend and Liquid Legends and EsportGo.com. So, once again, thanks for watching this, guys, or for reading the article. Have a wonderful day.